All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone for joining today. My name is Lance Holly. I'm uh, from the National Renewable Energy Lab, and I'm a prize administrator for the Solvit Prize. Today's informational webinar is going to cover all the aspects of this prize. We're going to make sure everyone leaves today with a, a thorough sense of what this prize is and what it entails. And uh, we also have members of the Department of Energy who are here to um, represent the prize and help talk about it as well. So I would like quickly for them to introduce themselves, starting with Becca. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Becca Simkowitz. I am a commercialization program manager at the Office of Technology Transitions, and I am the program manager for the Solvit Prize. Thanks, Becca. Andrew, do you wanna say hello? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Andrew Bray with the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations. Uh, work on program development um, at the office and excited to be here today. Turn it over to Emily. Thanks, Andrew. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Loker. I use she, her pronouns, and I am in the hydrogen and fuel cell technologies where I coordinate their equity and environmental justice work and HFTO is under the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. And I'll pass it to Lance. Back to you. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for jumping in and saying hello. So again, just to orient everyone, this is the uh, official informational webinar to cover the Solvit Prize. And uh, we want everyone to leave today with a full understanding of this prize, what it means to be involved, and what is expected of competitors. So welcome, and thank you for joining. Just a few housekeeping items. All attendee microphones and cameras are disabled. We are recording this webinar, and we are going to make it available on our HeroX platform at a later time uh, this week. HeroX is the platform where the prize is hosted, and uh, we will be covering what that looks like as well. But this is being recorded, and so if any issues come up or you would like some other members of uh, your team or organization to view this webinar, they are able to see a recording. If you do have any questions as this webinar uh, continues, please use the Q&A box, which we'll see at the um, Zoom uh, screen and you'll see that that's where you can post questions that we are going to cover at the end of today's session. We are also going to compile all of the Q&A from today's session and post that as a uh, single item so that you can review everybody's different questions. And if you experience any issues, please check your audio settings under the audio settings tab. And if anything is going disastrously wrong, again, this is being recorded, so you'll have um, other chances to review. Here's our agenda for today's session. We're going to give an overview of the American Made program for those of you who may be new to the Prize Challenges program. We're going to introduce the Solvit Prize, give you some background information on how it came to be, talk about prize eligibility for our competitors, as well as the timeline uh, through three phases. Then we'll go in depth on phase one, which is called Embark, and we'll talk about what competitors need to submit there. We'll talk about assessment, how submissions are assessed in order to determine winners. Then we'll briefly look ahead to phases two and three of the prize to give you a full sense of the scope. And at the end, we will cover how to compete, uh, which is a look at our HeroX platform and what you need to know to put together your submission. And at the end, cover some support and resources for competitors. So this is our agenda for today. First is a brief uh, overview of the American Made program. For those who not, may not have heard of it or are new to it, American Made is funded by the US Department of Energy and its mission is to supercharge a revolution of bold identity, bold ideas in the clean energy uh, sectors. Over the last six years, American Made has awarded $260 million in cash prizes and support to competitors across a whole range of prizes. The total number of prizes is now more than 70 that have been made uh, available to competitors across the country. 
And along the way, we have gained uh, more than 450 network members who have become part of this American-made network and this American-made ecosystem. So this prize that we're talking about today, the Solve It Prize, it fits into this greater American made uh, prize challenge ecosystem and uh, we're thrilled to have you be a part of it and we encourage you to uh, spread the word and see if there are other prize challenges that also might fit you or your organization's initiatives. All right, with that we are going to cover uh, some uh, background information and a high level overview of the Solvit Prize and to start us there I'm going to turn it over to Becca. Becca, take it away. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, so in this section, I and a couple of my colleagues will share a little bit more about how and why we developed the Solvit Prize and what the Department of Energy is hoping to achieve through this prize. Um, so the Solutions for Lasting Viable Energy Infrastructure Technologies, or Solvit Prize, hopes to enable innovative solutions for local energy-related challenges. We want to empower communities to identify and implement energy solution in a way that works for them and their unique challenges. Um, in doing so, we want to promote wider and more equitable technology uptake. So Solvit makes $5 million in cash prizes available with each team able to potentially win up to $730,000 across three competitive phases. So across these phases, competitors will work collaboratively with their identified communities, engaging them in the planning process, identifying and building support for their clean energy solutions, their clean energy or decarbonization projects, and work to develop and start to carry out these projects. So next slide, please. So through the Solve It Prize, DOE hopes to award competitors that have a history of working with communities um, that can then work with these communities to develop innovative clean energy solutions that address ongoing energy-related issues at the community level. Um, we want to enable solutions for addressing these ongoing energy-related issues. Um, we hope that through these solutions, we can support economic growth, workforce opportunities, public health, energy independence, and local backup power. And we want to provide resources and help communities build capacity to develop project action plans that support their clean energy transition. So, um, communities participating in Solve It can, can consider a range of potential clean energy technologies and solutions. So the rules document lists um, each, all of these eligible technologies on pages eight and nine. Um, so through competitors can consider any of, the el of these eligible technologies. DOE is particularly interested in awarding innovative or technically novel clean energy projects that will benefit disadvantaged communities, especially when these projects will provide uh, lasting economic or other benefits, such as health benefits, supporting the workforce, energy independence, and resilient power. Um, so what do we mean by innovative solutions? Examples of what we mean include uh, first-of-a-kind demonstrations at a particular size or scale, innovative applications or approaches, and novel combinations of clean energy technologies. And again, these are examples. Uh, this is not an inclusive list. Um, so the degree to which a submission could accomplish uh, all of these factors um, will factor into how uh, submissions are evaluated and awarded. Next slide, please. Um, so, and a little bit about the offices behind this prize. So I work at the Office of Technology Transitions, um, who's administering the prize or um, developing the prize. We, our mission is to expand the commercial impact of DOE's research investments and drive uptake of clean energy technologies. Uh, so we work with colleagues across the department to help drive this across the research development and demonstration continuum. Um, OTT is also charged with administering the Technology Commercialization Fund, which I'll tell you a little bit more about shortly. So now let me introduce my colleague, Andrew Bray, from the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations. Hi, thanks, Becca. 
Um, yeah, just wanted to say a word about um, Office of Clean Energy demonstrations and how this prize fits into what we're doing. So OSED, as we call ourselves, uh, believes this is a very important part of what we're trying to accomplish in scaling emerging technologies in order to meet our pressing climate challenges. Um, and we really believe that it's critical to enable communities to set their own direction uh, in tackling and uh, going along with the clean energy transition. So OSED was established uh, about three years ago in 2021 uh, and with a big chunk of funding from Bill, about $26 billion. Um, and like I said, uh, the mission of supporting demonstrations, uh, but also in collaboration with private sector for these innovative first of a kind uh, infrastructure projects that also uh, includes communities. So starting with these, uh, we have our big demonstration projects, but we also recognize the support of the ecosystem uh, surrounding those and bringing entire industry and communities along. So we realize, realize what a big task that is and what's, um, what it's gonna take to compete in this prize, uh, but are really looking forward to and excited about uh, what submissions we'll see. And with that, I'll turn it over to Emily. Thanks, Andrew. On the EERE side, EERE has the important mission of accelerating the research, development, demonstration, and deployment of technologies and solutions to equitably transition America to net zero greenhouse gas emissions, economy-wide by no later than 2050, and to ensure the clean energy economy benefits all Americans, creating good paying jobs for the American people, especially workers and communities impacted by the energy transition and those historically underserved by the energy system and overburdened pollution by pollution. So this prize really hits on the, the community piece there of our mission, as well as the renewable energy piece. And I will turn it back over to you, Becca. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Andrew and Emily. Uh, so I'd mentioned a minute ago that OTT administers the Technology Commercialization Fund. So in 2005, Congress established the Technology Commercialization Fund through the Energy Policy Act um, to um, to promote promising energy technologies for commercial purposes. So DO, the TCF provides 0.9% of DOE's research, development, demonstration, and commercial application funding for this purpose. So um, in November 2001, Congress passed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, which provided uh, about 62 billion to DOE, and TCF is applied to relevant bill activities. So under the bill TCF program, OTT pursues activities that broadly support the commercialization of promising energy technologies while simultaneously enhancing and improving American infrastructure, competitiveness, opportunity, equity, and addressing the climate crisis. So ultimately, through Bill TCF, we're hoping to cultivate an in an ecosystem and network around bill provision activities to enable faster replication and scaling. Uh, so solve it is funded through the bipartisan infrastructure law through uh, the technology commercialization fund and solve it will help support communities as they identify and implement innovative solutions in a way that addresses their unique challenges. So this will help promote the commercialization of promising energy technologies that will lead to an equitable and just transition. And with that, I will pass it back to Lance. Great, thank you, Becca, Andrew, and Emily for giving a thorough overview there of um, where this prize comes from and the different uh, DOE offices that are involved. Next, let's transition to talking about competitor eligibility and the timeline of the prize as a whole. So who is this prize for? This prize is looking for any organization or group or individual who is committed to working with communities to make positive changes, who has experience working with communities, who recognizes community challenges that can be solved by clean energy solutions, 
and who wants to engage with their community stakeholders on clean energy topics. So that'd be sort of a summary if you fit into uh, these general categories of, of who this prize is attempting to engage in this type of work. Our rules document has a thorough list of eligibility and this is basically saying um, if your uh, group or team member or individual would be eligible to compete and win cash prizes as part of uh, this competition. So we encourage you to see the full eligibility details in the rules, but it comes down to this is open to private entities, non-federal government entities, individuals, nonprofits, academic institutions. There is some more specific language of making sure that um, team captains are U.S. citizens or permanent residents, as well as businesses being incorporated and operating in the United States. So do check the rules document for a full breakdown of eligibility. Let's talk about the timeline. So we are right now in phase one called Embark. The Embark phase is going to go through April of this year. And Embark is going to award an estimated 25 winning teams, organizations, or individuals uh, at $80,000 each. And sort of the, the main line for this phase is to prove you can work with your community on energy solutions to local issues. So Embark is all about proving that you have what it takes uh, to set out on uh, a project or an initiative with your community. Of those 25 winners, they are the ones who will then proceed into phase two, which is called Engage. Phase two runs from May through November, and there will be an estimated 10 winners out of the estimated 25 from phase one. So then there will be 10 winners in phase two who will win $150,000 each. And the sort of tagline for phase two is that teams will work with their communities to identify innovative clean energy solutions. And the key there is working with the community uh, to, to find the solutions that work best for that community. Uh, of those 10 winners, estimated 10 winners in phase two, they will move in to phase three called establish, where there will be an estimated three top winners at $500,000 each. And this is uh, going to run from December of this calendar year through July of next calendar year. And in this phase, phase three, teams will complete action-oriented plans and prove that they have made the most progress towards their clean energy projects. Uh, I want to make sure it's clear to anyone listening on our webinar today, if you're not uh, familiar with the prize structure or the American Made Challenges structure, these are cash prizes. So in phase one, you can win $80,000, in phase two, $150,000, and in phase three, $500,000. So if you were to go through all three phases, that's a total of $730,000. This is not a grant. Uh, this is a prize that is being awarded for work completed. So you, you are proving that you um, have made this much progress or that you have completed these many activities and then you are awarded a cash prize. Uh, the idea is that competitors are taking those cash prizes and continuing their projects and initiatives to then be competitive in the next phase of the prize and in the next phases of their projects. So to get ahead of some maybe potential questions, uh, winners do not need to report out on the specific activities they are using their cash mo uh, prize money for. Uh, they do not need to say this is exactly what it will be used for. However, competitive submissions are always going to include, you know, a budget discussion and saying this is what we anticipate being able to use these funds in order to uh, progress with our own initiatives. Um, so if you do have any questions about kind of the cash prize system and how that works, you can feel free to throw those in the Q&A. As part of the submission itself, you would actually list uh, the individual or organization who would receive the cash prize. And uh, it is a check that goes out to um, who you list and uh, a the winner then moves on to the next phase. We will return to this timeline to cover uh, phases two and three towards the end of today's presentation, but I want to make sure everyone has this full view here up front. In terms of what is most important for competitors right now is what is in uh, red here, where your first submission deadline is April 12th at 5 p.m. Eastern. That is the first submission deadline for this prize, and that is the deadline for phase one. Um, if you've been following th since the start, we opened for submissions back on January 11th. Um, submissions due on April 12th, and then an anticipated winner announcement in May. 
Uh, as we just mentioned, those winners would then move on to phase two. You can see those anticipated uh, deadlines uh, there in the middle, and then those winners from phase two move on to phase three, and you can see those deadlines as well. Just note that future deadlines are all anticipated dates and may encounter some changes, but again, right now, the big one to focus on is April 12th to be able to put together your materials and create your submission. Speaking of that, let's now talk about what a submission entails. So we're going to focus just on phase one, again called Embark, and we're going to focus on um, what exactly as a competitor you would need to put forth uh, as part of a submission. Just to remind everyone, there's a full official rules document. It is on uh, our HeroX platform, and I'm going to give a quick run through of that, but the rules document looks like this image you can see here. It's located in the resources sections of, of HeroX, and uh, it, can, it includes a full breakdown of everything that is required for your submissions across all three phases. Today's webinar is meant to give you an overview of that, but please do use the rules as uh, the primary source of what exactly is needed. So if we look at the big picture view of phase one, the goal here um, is to have teams show that one, they have identified a community, and described challenges facing that community that can be addressed by a clean energy technology solution within the areas of interest for this prize. Uh, teams also need to show that they have or can assemble a team with the necessary experience and have a track record of successful community engagement. And to be clear, that community engagement could be a wide range of types of community engagement. It doesn't necessarily have to be in clean energy background. It's just can teams show that they have experience and resources to engage with their community stakeholders. And then the third point, uh, that competitors have a clear approach for engaging with the target community. So what is their approach in order to work with the community, gather feedback, and be able to um, have a dialogue about the best solutions for that community? So that's just the big picture view here for phase one. The submission package itself would include a cover page, a narrative, a submission summary slide, which is made public, and letters of support, which are optional. Uh, again, this is a, just a, a top-down view of the four main submission items. We're going to go into detail on each one so that you can see what is involved. The cover page should list all of your basic information so that we know who you are and what you're trying to do at a glance. So your submission title is whatever you would like to call your project. Your team name is whatever you would like your name to be. And make sure to remember this is a public facing team name. And if you are selected as a winner, this is what would be promoted as your name on any sort of public facing materials. So we encourage you to come up with a team name that makes sense for your project and your group. You'll include a short description of you or your team, as well as the target community that you would be working with for this project. You would include a list of team members, uh, including their names, where they're located, and links to professional profiles, any other partners that may be involved in your project, as well as their descriptions and locations, and your specific city, state, and nine-digit zip code. We do realize that plenty of teams will be located in the exact community that they want to be working with for their project, and others may not be located directly in that community. So this is where you would make that clear. Um, where are you? Where's your team? Where's your target community? And how they are linked. So that's the cover page. The next item is the narrative, and this is your primary submission document where uh, you will describe your experience working with communities, your history of successful community-based projects, uh, the community and your relationship to that community, the challenges in that community, and your plan for engaging with any relevant stakeholders. Uh, the narrative has three required elements. You can see them here. They are experience, energy challenges, and community outreach and engagement plan. And the narrative is a 2,000 word maximum document they can include up to five tables uh, and figures or other images to help bolster your um, description. We're going to come back to these specific categories in depth. Uh, so this is just a bigger picture view of the narrative as a whole. But again, this is your primary submission document. So first we covered the, the cover page. This is the narrative. Next comes the summary slide. This is a single slide, uh, public facing um, 
uh, PowerPoint slide, for example, that introduces your team, your community, and your energy-related challenge or challenges. This is meant to be at a glance for the public to see who are you, who's your community, what are you trying to solve, or what are you um, uh, anticipating being the, the challenge of your community that you are hoping to address. If you um, put this together, please make sure that your text is readable in a standard print and page and conference room projection, at least 14 point font. Uh, again, this is meant to be a public display of who you are, uh, and it's meant to be an easy and approachable way to display your team and mission. So please take that into account as you put that together. Uh, there aren't as many guidelines around what exactly this should look like. It's up to teams to be creative and uh, put together how they would like to be displayed. The fourth and final option are the letters of support, and these are optional. Uh, these are letters or other documentation from partners or other relevant entities that are critical to the success of your effort. Uh, examples of letters of support could be the following. They're not necessarily limited to these, but they could include letters from representatives in the community you work with, letters from representatives in the communities you have previously worked with, uh, letters from potential partners you will work with for phase two engage activities, um, and other types of documentation as you see fit. If you include these letters, please make sure each one is no more than one page long. And then they are all merged into one single PDF file to upload as part of your submission. And once again, these are optional. They are an unscored item. You do not have to have them be part of your submission package, but they are available if it makes sense for you. Okay, so we have covered the main four elements. You've got the cover page, the narrative, the submission summary slide, and then optional letters of support. I'd like to now go back to the narrative. As we mentioned, this is the primary submission item where you are putting the uh, vast majority of your information. There are three categories that um, we suggest competitors focus on. And the first one is experience. So you're going to introduce yourself and any member organizations, supporters, and your shared mission, vision, and goals. You're going to demonstrate that you have experience working with communities, including examples of successful participatory community initiatives, how you've worked with others um, and the outcomes in the past. Uh, again, your, your community work does not have to be focused in the past on, on clean energy initiatives. You can, you can feel free to describe a range of different community engagement. And then third would be describing your track record with and commitment to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, as well as environmental and energy justice. Um, including how it is planned or planned to be measured and tracked in the future. So this is category one, all about your team's experience. Category two of your narrative is energy challenges and community needs. So you will need to clearly define the community that you are focusing on and describe your relationship to that community. Again, some competitors may be located in that community directly and others may not. So make sure you're defining that uh, connection. Please uh, describe the specific energy challenges or needs or inequities that are facing that community. Describing potential solutions that might address these energy challenges, potential solutions, and then showing how these possible solutions align with DOE's areas of interest for the prize. And there's a full breakdown in section 1.4 of our rules document. So showing a link to DOE's areas of interest is a crucial part of um, the energy challenges and needs section. So that's category number two. And the third and final category is your engagement plan. This is a high level sort of approach for a comprehensive, successful, and effective community engagement um, plan and how you plan to measure progress uh, towards your goals. You will need to describe uh, resources, including resources to help evaluate different technologies for various scenarios that you will need to successfully engage with your community and describe any actions required to access or obtain these resources. So this is your plan of action for engaging with your community about what uh, challenges that community is facing and how potential clean energy technologies could uh, address and solve those challenges. Those are the three categories uh, of your submission narrative. And again, that's a 2000 word maximum document with up to five supporting figures that you can use to display uh, and show all of the different information asked for here. Now that we've covered the primary submission elements, everyone's next logical question is, well, how do you pick the winners? So let's look at how these elements are assessed in order to um, choose the winners. And if you remember from phase one, there are going to be an estimated 25 winners selected for $80,000 each. So let's talk about how the submissions are assessed. 
The three categories that we just covered for the narrative each have grading criteria connected to them. So for example, the first category is experience. This is 40% of your grade or 40% of your score uh, as part of your narrative. And you can see on the screen, these are six bullet points that are the exact judging statements that our judges, our reviewers, are going to be using to evaluate submissions. So we highly encourage competitors as they put together their submissions to look directly at these uh, judging categories, these grading categories, as they um, put together and, and assess their own materials and sort of line up as well as you can. I'm not going to read through each one. You can see them here. These are also outlined in the rules um, and, and described in depth. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you're following these grading categories, such as describing your mission and goals, your demonstrated history of work with communities, your access to the necessary skills, knowledge, and experience, uh, and so forth. All of those are within the experience category, which is 40% of your total score. The second category that we covered previously was energy challenges and community needs. This is 30% of your total score. Again, these are the exact grading statements that the judges, the reviewers will be using to look at each submission. So you're, you're identifying your community and making sure your community is well-defined. You're demonstrating uh, your understanding of that community, including its energy challenges and needs. You're clearly identifying the challenge or challenges impacting the community and how it could be addressed with clean energy solutions. Um, and then how these challenges pose significant constraints on the community's ability to pursue balanced and just economic development. This is all part of the energy challenges and community needs section at 30 percent. Third and final category is the engagement plan for the final 30 percent of your score. Again, these are the judging statements that will be used. You're describing your clear and specific next steps. You're describing your clear path to develop, implement, and track progress on a clean energy project action plan. Uh, you've outlined a clear, robust plan to meaningfully engage local stakeholders in a manner that influences decisions. And uh, you include specific diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility goals and describing how those uh, progress towards those goals will be tracked. So these are the four judging criteria for your engagement plan, which is 30% of your score, the previous uh, category being 30, and the first one experience being 40 to add up to 100% of your total possible points. All right. We have covered all of the phase one submission requirements and how those phase one submission requirements will be assessed. Uh, I want to just briefly take a minute to look ahead to phases two and three. We're not going to cover all the specifics of the submissions um, in terms of requirements for phases two and three. We'll have a separate session uh, that will be put forth um, for the folks that are going to be involved in those phases. But I do think it's important for competitors to make sure they know what is coming up. So looking ahead, um, winners from phase one move on to phase two called Embark, and those winners will engage with their community stakeholders to develop the community's vision for their future clean energy or decarbonization project according to what they put forth in their phase one submission. They will demonstrate the results of a comprehensive and innovative engagement effort that has identified community priorities, and they will identify a clean energy solution to address these priorities. So. Competitors as part of phase one should be looking ahead to what is expected in phase two and crafting their submission materials with phase two advancement in mind. Uh, and then winners from phase two move on to phase three called establish, where uh, competitors will create clean energy project action plans that clearly articulate a credible path forward to carrying out at least one specific technically novel clean energy or decarbonization project. And winners will prove that they have at least one binding commitment in place to support project implementation and provide a clear and reasonable project plan. Do want to make it clear, um, if anyone uh, wasn't quite sure, the goal of phase three is not to fully complete a project and have everything done. It is uh, simply to show the most progress towards the action plan and having a binding commitment um, in place to support project implementation. So that's just a quick look ahead at phases two and three. This is a reminder of what you saw earlier, our, our full timeline here. And again, we're in phase one, looking at 25 anticipated winners at $80,000 each 
who would then move into phase two. And just to make sure it's clear, once we are in phase two, it's only those winners that are competing. It is no longer uh, an open prize to the public there. So if this is a, a prize that you are interested in being involved with, now is the time to put together your materials and submit to phase one and, uh, and, and, and work with your local communities and stakeholders and organizations to craft your team. All right, we do have two last sections to cover here. One is where to apply. I've mentioned HeroX a couple times. HeroX is the online platform that we use to host prize competitions. For those of you who have already registered to follow this prize, excellent. Uh, if you have not, you can go to herox.com slash solve it. The link is here. Uh, and yes, we will be sending these slides out. If that question has already been posted, yes, you will be having access to these slides. But this is what it will look like. You click um, solve this challenge. It'll ask you to sign in or create an account and agree to some terms of use. And then you will be following the prize and registered to compete. You can submit your materials any time before the phase deadline. I do want to make it clear as well that, um, as it says there in the bottom, you can save your submission and return to it at any time prior to the deadline, even if you've already submitted it. The prize team and our reviewers do not look at any submissions prior to the deadline. So if you've submitted and then something has changed or you want to update or amend something, you can do that any time up until the phase deadline, which is April 12th. So that's how you can go through your submission. Uh, this is the full view of the HeroX page for the Solve It Prize. On the, the left, you see summary. That's a big picture view of the prize. It's a great way to just understand the prize at a glance. The next uh, category is timeline. Go here because it gives you a current you are here view and shows you exactly what's coming up. Um, and that timeline is what you should be following for any upcoming dates that you need to know. The update section is important because this is where we will post things. Maybe some of you came to this webinar because you saw the update posted there, or we might post here are some extra resources to be aware of. Here are some uh, power connectors to be aware of that we'll get into in a second. Uh, this is uh, something where when we post an update, it will go to your inbox so that you can see what is new with the prize. Want to make sure everyone knows that the forum is a great place to go, not only to ask any questions of the prize team, but also to see if there might be others out there who could join your project. It's a great opportunity to say, um, I'm working with this community and I have this capacity, but I, I need to work with others in these types of areas. You could post something like that on the forum as a way to potentially find others or teammates uh, to combine forces on this project. And again, you can also use the forum to ask questions um, of, of the prize structure or anything that you would like clarified. I'm going to jump over to resources. Please make sure you're checking resources. This is where the rules are hosted. This is where contact information is going to be hosted. Submission templates are going to be hosted here for you to follow, as well as other types of resources to benefit you. And the last one is the FAQ section. This is frequently asked questions. We are going to take all the Q&A from today's session, compile that, and put that in the FAQ as well. So this is a place to go to see uh, answers to questions that others have had um, as well. So that's just the overview of the HeroX platform. Do let us know if there are any issues that you encounter um, on the platform, and we will help you navigate those and help you navigate the prize. Our last section today, before we jump into the Q&A, is competitor support. Uh, for those of you who maybe have been involved with American Made in the past, you might recognize the term power connectors. Uh, and for those of you who are new, we would like to talk about power connectors now. So we have power connectors on board for this prize. Power connectors are organizations who are under subcontract with the American Made Prize Administration team, and they provide prize outreach and free competitor support. I'd like to emphasize the free competitor support aspect. Power connectors are meant to be a valuable resource for you. What do they offer? Teaming sessions available to those interested in competing. So again, you can work with them to say, I'm a community-based organization, but I need help from this type of clean energy industry. Um, so maybe you could form some partnerships. Power Connectors can help you there. And Power Connectors offer office hours 
for submission feedback, questions, and general support. So you could sign up for a one-to-one -one office hour or a group office hour, or you could even just email back and forth. But Power Connectors are able to give you submission feedback. You can say, here's my narrative. I would love any feedback. They can um, read through it, and they can give you any sort of thoughts, feedback, or advice. Just to be clear, Power Connectors cannot redline your submission. They cannot go through and you know make new word choices or rewrite any parts of it, but they can read it and give you any um, sort of general feedback. They can also answer questions that might be specific to your situation. Uh, the, the prize team often receives questions specific about eligibility situations. Um, and usually the most we can do is point people to the rules because uh, the prize team has to be very impartial in engaging with competitors. But a power connector is someone that you could have more of a back and forth dialogue about your specific situations in order to uh, have a, a very clear understanding of what you might need to put forth. Um, so power connectors are a great resource for that. How do I contact them? We have posted direct contact information on the HeroX platform. It's going to be in both the form and resources section for you. So for this prize, you can see along the bottom, you should uh, just be familiar with these names. You might've already heard from some of these names and these are your resources. So we have ADL Ventures, we have EFN, the Entrepreneur Futures Network, and we have the Neighborhood Housing Services of South Florida. So these again are two, sorry, three organizations who provide free competitor support. Um, they can feel free to put contact information and sign up information in the chat or Q&A for everybody to have here. But again, they are available. That contact information is available on the HeroX platform. So I want to say a big thank you to our Power Connectors for helping support this prize uh, and support competitors in their journey. With that, we have come to the end of this informational webinar, giving a, a full overview of the prize and what is involved. Uh, we hope that this is something that you can take and if you have potential other teammates or um, organizations that might be interested in partnering with you for this prize, feel free to show them this webinar. It does have a recording that we will make available on HeroX and we will also be making these slides available on HeroX. So at this time, we would like to open it up to questions and clarifications that have been popping up in the Q&A. As we go here, I'm going to bring back my colleagues from DOE to help us um, answer these as we go through. My microphone was not working. Um, are there any specific technologies, companies that would be preferred for deployment that have been a part of the technology research conducted by these three organizations? Or can the applicant work with a local clean energy startup of their choice? Uh, the app um, uh, competitors can work with any partners of their choosing, as long as the technology is eligible. Okay. Next question is, are native tribes eligible? Yes. Yes. Should the technology be deployed at homes or commercial applications are okay too? Do you want to take this one or do you want me to? Go for it. This is say we are interested in projects at the um, neighborhood, town, or city scale. So that could be either uh, residential or commercial, I think. Next question is, do you have to be awarded the first two phases in order to qualify for phase three? Yep. So as we had described before, just to make sure, um, right now we're in phase one, you would have to be a winner of phase one to advance to phase two, and then you would have to be a winner of phase two to advance to phase three. Next question is, can the prize fund towards a facility that will be used to carry out the strategy, like working with community stakeholders, purchasing equipment needed for the technology? So uh, I think the question is asking about allowable uses of prize funds. Yeah. And uh, prize funds prize funds are no, uh, prize awards are no strings attached. You can use them as you see fit. Next question is how, is, how important is a past track record for the applicant? Uh, so um, experience is 40% of the score for, phase one embark. Uh, so it is 
it is considerably important. And just to emphasize, as we mentioned a couple of times during the presentation, um, competitors should uh, focus on their past track record of engaging with communities and how that would then play into um, this type of community engagement for a clean energy project. Next question. Does a technology that reduces energy use qualify? In this instance, is it, it is a water sustainability technology focused on precision irrigation and agriculture. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to look at page eight through nine of the rules that list the eligible technologies. There are a number of technologies listed that reduce energy use, but unfortunately we can't uh, weigh in on specific eligibility determinations, but um, our power connectors who are referenced a couple slides up can provide a little more guidance there. Next question, is the identified community to be involved from the embark phase as partner or not? I read that as um, does the team applying include that community or a member from that community specifically on the team. And for phase one, uh, it is up to the team to decide which members make sense to be included there. There's not a specific requirement. You would be listing the community that you are going to work with and your connection to that community. It's not an explicit requirement to have you know, this or that type of organization from the community, but you are certainly welcome to have um, one or more organizations from that community involved in your team. The next question. If the team had a funded project that addresses clean energy for a community, can they still submit? I, I read this as um, there's, there's a current project that's already underway that has received funding. Can they still apply for this? Um, and the answer would be, Yes, um, we would anticipate that there are a variety of projects that are maybe in different stages of ongoing, but, but the, the submission that the team would put forth would need to um, follow the guidelines and prize objectives for this particular uh, solve it prize and make sure that the narrative is crafted in a way to show here's how this prize fits into the overall goals of their project and initiative. Next question, uh, question, are these details for the weighted scores available? Yes, all of the details about scoring are available in the uh, rules document and will also, I, I saw several questions about um, distributing slides, making recording, those will all be made available on HeroX uh, in the days following this webinar. Next question, is there a page limit or word limit is there a specific font requirement? The word limit is 2000. So that is um, in place of any page limit, just a word limit, specific font requirement. Um, this would just be a standard, standard paper font of, I guess around 12 is kind of the norm. This would, this would be um, words, word count mattering uh, the most, but please make sure it is readable, approachable and, uh, clear for a reviewer to be able to go through. One second, I lost my place. Does this have to be a new project or can you use an existing project that's happening? Either one. Again, going back to making sure projects are focused on the goals of this prize and how they're achieving those goals. As far as eligibility, uh, eligible competitors is concerned, is a single enterprise considered eligible to apply? Yes. Next question, can you describe how you would define a quote, binding commitment for a project in phase three? In the, yeah, Becca, I was gonna say in the rules document yeah. where we list so um, we 
are looking for something that demonstrates a firm commitment to carrying this project out, something that shows a credible path toward executing the project. So um, we give some examples. Um, so this might include signed contract, approved or in process, leasing or permitting applications, formally, formally documented partnerships committing to the project. Um, obviously that's not an exhaustive list, but some examples. Ideally, how many people are on a team? No limit there. It's what makes sense uh, for the team. But I would like to call attention that um, what is important is making sure that team members are listed in the actual submission itself. Not all of those team members have to be on your HeroX team in terms of registering on HeroX. Make sure that your team captain on HeroX is the most important sort of point person from the lead organization that would make sense for this prize. But in terms of listing numbers of team members on the submission, there's not a limit. Next question is, are there any specific projects that the prize is looking for? Uh, for this one, I would again um, you know, refer to the rules at, uh, for you know, sort of the list of eligible technologies and um, areas of interest. I, mean, I think we're really looking for projects that fall within those areas of interest. This question is, I understand that phase one through three will span 2024 slash 2025. Will there be another iteration of Solvit Prize that will span 2025, 2026? There's not one that has been formally announced at this point. However, the American Made Program does have prize opportunities uh, coming up on a regular basis. So we encourage mm -hmm. people to follow AmericanMadeChallenges.org, which is where any new prize opportunities would be made public. Uh, are we able to have a short phone call to discuss the fit of our project? We would encourage you to do that with Power Connectors. That is exactly their role, where they can go more in depth with you and your specific project. Uh, as the prize administration team, we are actually not allowed to do that. So Power Connectors would be an excellent opportunity for you there. Next question. To clarify, phase two winners need to conduct robust community engagement to inform a credible plan towards a specific novel clean energy project, and then they get $500,000 to carry out that plan. So we should be submitting ideas for projects that can be achieved with 500K, may limit the size of the project to a single building rather than a community program. Right, so it's up to, sorry, Andrew, did you wanna jump in on that one? Yeah, yeah I'll maybe jump in. Um, sure. We're not necessarily expecting this to cover the total cost of any project, um, but the idea is to show that you're working to build momentum towards a concrete project and hopefully get further outside funding. Anything you'd like to add? Just to clarify, it, it, let's say you're putting together a budget. You wouldn't have to say this whole project is 500,000 because that's the prize award. It could, it could certainly be more. And, and you're saying, here's how our prize award would sort of fit into helping that plan. Okay. Next question, in the case of an academic institution, considering the campus as a community, the team can be composed by different units within the university or the team needs to, be, to involve other eligible entities no affiliated, not affiliated in, to the institution. Uh, a team could be various uh, groups from within the same academic institution. Yeah, there's no explicit requirement that they would have to partner with anyone else. The, the team could be the academic institution. Uh, will the Q&A also be posted? Yes, so we are going to compile the questions and answers and post them as a sim single uh, document on HeroX. Next question, if you have been a competitor on other prizes, including whether or not you received a prize, does that have any weight in the selection process? That's not uh, weighted as a judging category specifically. We just would encourage competitors to make sure if you have competed in other prizes, if you have been part of teams, uh, that your projects and their initiatives are tailored to the goals of this specific prize. Okay. Uh, can quote community be defined to mean a single multifamily building in a dense urban environment? 
It would be up to the team to define and describe what the, in this case, community boundary is for their specific project and initiative. Next question is, can we work with multiple communities with this price? Yes, and again, I would just make it make sure you're you're describing uh, your connection to those communities, their specific challenges, and how your plan would approach those challenges. Next question is: Should the submission be technology based or a program initiative? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I can step in here since um, kind of the end result is a uh, we're looking for concrete projects. Um, I think they're more uh, physical projects as opposed to a program, although, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is a, uh, the competitors should, should do their best to sort of describe how their initiative brings in clean energy technology that may be novel or new to the area or, or um, an initiative that hadn't been uh, you know, considered before to meet the specific needs of those communities. Next question. Uh, so prizes don't fall under any C2 CFR 200 regulations? I guess I would need a little more clarification on that one. Uh, I believe, um, no, well, we can confirm this, but uh, prizes are governed under a different piece of legislation than the Federal Code of Regulations. But uh, we can confirm that in follow up. Next question. Can you kindly give some examples of strategic community suitable for the program? Uh, our examples would, would have to be limited to the, the bigger picture goals of the prize being um, on an earlier slide we had mentioned of particular interest were disadvantaged communities uh, where bringing in novel or new clean energy implementation or technologies would be a significant boost to that community's um, health and public benefits, economic activity, et cetera. Next question, are some specific tech field, uh, what are some specific tech fields that DOE is focused on? And we actually have a full list that was, Becky, you just mentioned it, page uh, eight or nine. Eight or nine the of rules. the rules is a list of those tech fields. And um, I know we have just a couple of minutes left. Um, so I am, yeah. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. And, um, you know, you all had so many great and really detailed questions that we unfortunately just can't get to everything, but we will post a full Q and A. So I think you want, do you want to wrap us yeah. up Lance? Yep, exactly. So just to make sure everyone knows recording of today's presentation and the slides will be posted on HeroX. And uh, after a little bit of time to compile all of the Q&A that is typed in here, both those that we answered uh, on camera and the ones that we didn't get to, full Q&A uh, responses will be posted as an item on PRX as well. Please make sure you're following the prize if you aren't already so that you can get those updates. Thank you everyone so much for attending today. Uh, and showing your interest in this prize opportunity. We're very excited to engage with competitors and see what folks uh, can put together for their communities. That deadline is April 12th. And uh, thank you again for attending today. Have a great rest of your day.